Hello, and welcome aboard EV Nautilus. Today, we are going to be taking a peek behind the science of underwater mapping, also called bathymetry. Maps are an essential part of our daily lives. Since we use maps so much, it only makes sense that we need a map of the ocean floor. Exploration starts with great maps. So let's take a deep dive and see what's laying underneath the waves by learning five fun facts about mapping. Number one, mapping reveals underwater mountains. Did you know there are entire mountain ranges underwater? It's easy to look at the ocean and lose perspective of how much terrain there is hidden in the depths. The longest mountain chain in the world is actually under the water. It's called the Mid-Ocean Ridge and it's right off the eastern side of America. Not only are there extremely long mountain chains, but some of the mountains are even taller than Mount Everest. Mind blown, right? Underwater mountains are regularly discovered while mapping the deep sea. They are called sea mounts. Makes sense. Sea mountains, sea mounts. But mapping doesn't just discover hidden mountains. It also discovers the deepest parts of our oceans too. Trenches are some of the deepest parts of our planet. Maybe you've heard of the Marianas Trench? It's the deepest part of our ocean. Number two, only 23% of the seafloor is mapped in high resolution. The ocean is a busy place and it's only getting busier. Science, jobs, and exploration all need good high resolution maps. Thanks to satellites using something called altimetry, we have an idea of what the seafloor kind of looks like. But while this gives us a basic idea, it leaves out a lot. Have you ever made a blanket fort? You put blankets over different furniture to make your fort. From the outside, you can see a basic shape of chairs, tables, or sofas, but you cannot tell any of the details. This is like the satellite data. When Nautilus uses its high resolution mapping, it pulls off the blanket, allowing for a detailed picture. Nautilus and ships across the world are working hard to map the entire seafloor as part of a global mapping effort called Seabed 2030. Since 2012, Nautilus has mapped enough to have gone around the Earth almost 11 times. Number three, we use sounds to create maps underwater. Maybe you have heard that bats and whales use sound to create an image of their surroundings called echolocation. Humans have been able to create their own way of echolocating called sonar. On the bottom of Nautilus is a special instrument that sends down multiple beams of sound to the ocean floor. Each beam strikes the bottom and the sound bounces back to the ship. This is called multi-beam echo sounder and it is our best tool to learn about the shape and depth of the ocean floor. On board Nautilus, the multi-beam echo sounder listens closely using advanced electronics for the sound's return. The longer it takes for the sounds to return, the deeper it is. In shallower water, the sounds return faster. The multi-beam sonar can be used in multiple ways, from providing images of shipwrecks and hydrothermal vents, along with the traditional seafloor features, such as sea mounts and trenches. Number four, mapping can determine the type of seafloor. In addition to sound providing the depth of the ocean floor, it can also give clues about what type of bottom the seafloor has, such as hard rock, soft sand, or even coral reefs. Mapping researchers listen not only to the time it takes for the ping to return to the ship, but how loud the ping returns. The strength of a returning ping is called backscatter. Areas of hard seafloor, such as lava rock, will have a strong backscatter while areas of softer seafloor, like mud, will have a softer or less intense backscatter. Astonishingly, we even can detect plumes of bubbles rising from the seafloor that indicate methane gas seeps. Backscatter measurements are combined with seafloor maps, allowing for a better, more complete understanding of the seafloor. Number five, mapping is slow. You can ride a bike faster than we can map. When you ride your bike, you probably can ride about 15 miles per hour. That is about 13 knots. Nautilus maps slowly, only 8 to 11 miles per hour, which is about 7 to 10 knots. If you could ride your bike on water, you would zoom right past us. Not only that, but we have to move around the same area back and forth. We sometimes call this mowing the lawn. We slowly move back and forth a patch of ocean only moving over a little bit every time we turn around. 
Bonus fact, many types of ships and vehicle carry multi-beam systems. Because of the slowness, we need more multi-beams out in the ocean to reach our goal of completing the seafloor map. Nautilus is a mapping superstar, able to cover 3,100 square kilometers or 1,200 square miles at max every day. This is equivalent to mapping Rhode Island every day. There are many other ships which also map the seafloor around the world, but even combined, it's estimated to take decades to map the remaining three-fourths of the seafloor, unless more vehicles and multi-beams get out in the ocean. One example is Drix. It looks like a cute little submarine, but it is powerful. Drix is an uncrewed surface vehicle or USV. This means that just like Hercules and Argus, a pilot and a co-pilot will be controlling Drix from the control van in the Nautilus. Not only that, but Drix can map for seven days straight. While Drix is mapping shallow water, the Nautilus is able to continue conducting mapping in the deeper waters, or possibly even deploy the ROVs. Well, there it is. Five interesting facts about multi-beam mapping and why it is so important to exploring our oceans. Let's review what we learned today. Number one, mapping reveals underwater mountains. Number two, only 23% of the seafloor is mapped in high resolution. Number three, we use sound to create maps underwater. Number four, mapping can determine the type of seafloor. Number five, mapping is slow, so we're using multi-beams on new uncrewed and autonomous vessels to cover more ground. Thank you so much for coming aboard and learning. Like this video? Keep exploring with us as we dive deeper into the wondrous world of our shared oceans.